There's always someone before you. There's always a previous victim that they are discarding right now as they're grooming you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Psychopath Exposure. I hope everyone's having an amazing holiday season. And I know that's hard to believe considering what a shit year we've had. But that's going to be over in a few days. But I promise you, the psychopathic trauma will carry on into 2021 if you don't do the work. So it's important that we own up to everything that's going on right now. If we're stuck in a situation that we want to get out of, this is the time to take action. Um, it doesn't get any worse than 2020. So uh, if you want to kickstart your year in the right way, I suggest uh, standing up for yourself right now and start making some changes, especially if you're in a toxic relationship with a psychopath narcissist. Um, so again, welcome everybody. Happy to be making another video. I know it's been, I know it's been a while, but we don't pull punches here, motherfuckers. So we only spit truths. Hope you're ready for some real shit. Um, again, if you're new and you're going through um, maybe a discard right now and you're still feeling attached to your tormentor, I do offer an ebook that I put together that's absolutely free. And um, it teaches you how to go about establishing no contact boundaries with your psychopath narcissist. And I urge everybody to read that and to implement those steps immediately so that you can start your new year fresh without having those motherfuckers contacting you or somehow sneaking back into your life. So just click on the link below on the description. I uh, will flash the title and the website here as well. It's a 22 page ebook and you can just download it straight into your computer and your phone and I promise that if you follow exactly what I tell you to do there your life will begin to start getting better will begin to start getting better so a question came in today someone asked me my opinion on whether the narcissists love bombing stage if it's actually real or if it's something that has completely been orchestrated, 100% fake, as in, I don't know, maybe the narcissist is at home polishing up their words, practicing what they're gonna say to you, and calculating every single event of the love bombing stage. Um, and I have, I have a strong theory, as well as my own personal experiences with that, that I'd like to share. First of all, we have to understand there are degrees of narcissism. There are some people that are low-tier narcissists, and sometimes they actually show a little bit of empathy, especially around pets, uh, young children. Then there's mid-tier narcissists, high-tier narcissists. We start getting into the sociopathic narcissists and the psychopath narcissists. When you're dealing with a psychopath, a complete full-fledged psychopath. I mean, these people are like machines. They are like terminators. It's like they just have a program that's been downloaded into their system and they just execute without, without hesitation, without a flinch. Um, and the love bombing stage can indeed be very, very believable and very, convinc very convincing. Um, Low-tier narcissists, they're not... They're not uh, as advanced as you might imagine. They seem to fit in pretty well. And uh, they just have the disorder hasn't evolved yet. And um, over time, depending on the quality of life that they have, depending on who their partner is, how much enabling the partner does, or how much catering they do to the narcissist, um, you know, sometimes if, if they're with a partner that's constantly attacking them back or calling them out, uh, the narcissist will sustain more of that injury, the narcissistic injury, which triggers them to become 
full-fledged narcissist and things progressively get worse. Um, but let's get back. I know I'm ranting and, and I love to rant and I know you guys love when I rant. But uh, let's get back on topic here. So I guess the... So my theory really is that since these, these, these monsters are so delusional and they believe their own lies, they create a facade, they create like a bubble of, it's, a, it's an idealization bubble when they meet one of their new targets, one of their new supplies. So um, yes, they do target a quality supply. They, they do study you. They do, they try to learn as much as they can about you so that then they can mirror those likes, those, those interests that you have to, to convince you that, you're, that they're soulmates with you, to convince you how much you have in common. And yes, that, that's all part of the, of the trick. That's all part of the planning and, and the strategy. Um, but at the same time, this, this idealization bubble that they create is so delusional that they actually believe that you might be the one that makes them happy. Because you see, Narcissists are always miserable people. No matter how good the quality of their life is, no matter how awesome the relationship that they might be with or who their partner is, they live a miserable life. It's never enough. And after they ruin that relationship and they, they meet someone new, they idealize this person to a point where um, it, it, it feels genuine in a way. It feels genuine, and I'm sure many of you would agree that, you know, as you look back into those times of the love bombing, you do remember that there were times that you sincerely felt that they were real. And you look at pictures, and you, you look at the way they, they would look at you, and the way they would smile, and, you, and, and, and you're like, wow, like, that actually felt real. Like, I could tell when, when they were faking, like, their smile wasn't the same, like, like they, they didn't have the... the, the the crow's feet in their eyes when they would smile is like a fake smile. You see it in our photographs that it's fake. But then you look at some of the earlier ones and they legit were having fun. And they, they felt loose. They, they didn't feel like they were calculating their, their moves or, or calculating the things they would tell you. It, it felt like they were genuinely happy with you. And, and the reason for that is because they actually believe in their delusional, um, in their delusional bubble that you might be the one. You might be the one that actually makes them happy. But do not doubt. Do not doubt that that's still clouded with malicious intent. And I'll tell you why. Behind that facade that they believe, behind all that, that joy that apparently seems real, remember, in the background, they are destroying their previous victim. There's always someone before you. There's always a previous victim that they are discarding right now as they're grooming you. So that means that despite, despite how real it might seem and despite how they actually believe and are, are, may seem generally happy with you at the time, and sometimes that's true, Behind the scenes, once, once you drop them off or once they go home or whatever the case may be, behind the scenes, they're destroying their past victim. They're ignoring their texts they're, or they're being extremely short, right? They're dodging their calls and um, you can t they're just torturing their ex-victims. Um, they're, they're torturing them. They're, they're at that point of, of the end of the devaluation cycle and they're entering into that discard phase where their victim is just completely losing their minds and um, the psychopath doesn't want anything to do with them anymore because they have found their new target. And in the case of a narcissist that's looking to get into a relationship versus the narcissist that just wants to go out to a nightclub and just meet new women or new dudes and gold dig them and just extract them of supply and just fuck them that night and leave them or whatever the case. The narcissist that's looking for a relationship um, is not going to have so many other, they're not going to be playing so many people at the same time at the beginning. They're only going to be grooming you. They don't move on to another victim until they're like on, on phase two. Once they, once they start devaluing you, once that bubble gets popped, once that facade that they created is no longer valid, 
then they start looking for other, other people. And sometimes they just meet someone else and they completely lose interest with you overnight because the disorder is that unstable. It's very, very unstable. Um, even though it follows the patterns to a T, it's an unstable disorder. They, they, cannot sustain, they cannot sustain their facade for too long. Their mask begins to crack little by little and sometimes all at once, depending on how strong the injury they sustain or how, how much you piss them off um, if you call them out on something, right? So be weary, people. Um, I know, I know it, it's hard sometimes to, uh, to look back and maybe look at old pictures, which you should never do, by the way. But it's hard when, when sometimes you stumble upon a photo, then you're like, wow, like, I remember that day. And they, did, they didn't say anything that didn't make sense. They didn't say anything confusing. They didn't create a story. They, they, they were like fully present. And you, it was the only time that maybe in their eyes you felt... You felt maybe some sort of a connection. And again, that, that's like with low-tier narcissists. With a psychopath, you'll, you'll see that they're dead. They're dead inside. When you look into the eyes, you, never, you don't see anything. You don't see a soul. You don't find a connection. But with low-tier narcissists, sometimes they're so delusional that, you know, that it, 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 it's a little more genuine than most cases. But do not doubt there's someone else behind that they're crushing. And that, for that reason alone... You have to remember they are evil. They are spawns of Satan. They are the lowest scum on this planet. And do not get fooled and um, let go of that illusion. Things will never be the way. Things will never be the way they were at the beginning. You will never ever feel that that genuine interest in you that they showed you during the love bombing stage. It'll never happen. And that's, that's part of the trap. That's part of the drug that, um, unfortunately, they uh, infect you with. That's why it's so hard to let go. That's why it's so hard to move on once you're in that second stage, that you're being devalued. That's why you get stuck and you're like, wait, wait a minute. You used to love this about me and now you don't. You used to compliment me this way and now you don't. And... It's like you just, you're chasing that high. You're chasing that original high that you can, never, you can never ever reach. And they know that. And they know that. And you know, and they love watching you suffer and, and fight searching for that person that once seemed to truly be genuinely interested and excited about the relationship. And they love watching that. And as you move on to phase three, the discard phase, once you've completely lost your mind and you're in that Stockholm Syndrome cycle where they make you feel like utter shit, but you, f you feel like they're the only ones that can make you feel better at the same time. Once you're in that place, they're just sucking you dry that's narcissistic supply to them. Watching you cry, watching you suffer, watching you beg, watching you try to understand, to plead with them. And um, they, they, they watch you react and, and, and lose it. And they, it, it gives them a sense of empowerment. They feel empowered at that point. Because you have to understand, um, a psychopath narcissist, they're, they're an empty vessel. They're nothing inside. They're nothing. They need you. They need people like you to sustain, I guess, to sustain their life. They suck you dry of your life force energy. They need you. Okay? You're very important to them in a, in a way that, um, I guess, you wish it wasn't that way. You wish you were important to them for healthy reasons, but it's for unhealthy, toxic selfish reasons and um, as they continue to devalue you and discard you as long as you're stuck in that cycle if you don't understand what you're in what you're involved with what they are you're inadvertently feeding them and keeping them alive and that's why sometimes they'll discard you 
and um, they'll make it a point to somehow stick around just so that could just so they could continue to torture you in some way or another and that's why it's so important to go no contact if you really want to break free from these monsters you have to go no contact you can't continue to drink swallow the poison that you're trying to detox yourself from you'll never be free makes absolutely no sense so remember no matter how real the love bombing felt at that time even even those flashes of sincerity remember that in the background they were being malicious cruel and evil to a past victim to someone that once was just like you and for that reason alone you cannot give them the benefit of the doubt you cannot give them a free pass because they were being evil to someone else they're not good people they're monsters they're horrendous pieces of shit you know it you just might be afraid to admit it but you let me know when you're done eating your shit sandwich eventually you're gonna realize it tastes like shit and you're gonna want to move on to something else um, so that's all I have for you guys tonight um, I want to remind you guys I do offer private one-on-one -on -one coaching for those of you that need to talk to someone that understands I know too well that friends and family have no fucking clue what the fuck we went through and they're just gonna eventually dismiss you and just get tired sick and tired of listening to your shit and they're gonna make you feel alone and some sometimes the narcissist has already tapped into your friends and family as well and created a smear campaign and made you look like the crazy person so you have no one to talk to um, so if you like more information on that uh, send me an email at info at psychopathexposure.com and uh, give me a brief um, scenario of what you're going through to see if we're a good fit for each other obviously if you like the the material that I'm offering today then I'll uh, definitely reach out and uh, I'll give you the details more on that and what we can set up um, definitely drop a like on the video and uh, share your experiences in the comments with everybody um, I know the stories they may seem different but they're all the same they all they all follow the same patterns and we need that validation to, to remind us that this was indeed a trick. No matter how crazy it is, there is an underlying pattern that you have to realize exists and you have to be able to decipher and notice because it will save your life. So thanks again for watching, guys. Please subscribe, yada, yada, yada. You know what we all say at the end of videos. Um, but definitely, it's been a pleasure. Hope you guys are doing awesome. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. If you have any questions, if you have a video you would like me to make, again, drop a comment below or shoot me an email and I'll see what I can do for you. Have an epic holiday season. Merry fucking Christmas, Warriors. I love you guys. Take care.